Welcome to the Leading Edge Design Group video podcast series, where we discuss all things data center, LED lighting, and information and communications technology. Each video podcast segment features a conversation with an industry expert and centers around topics important to our clients and community. So Ryan, with that, with that hybrid approach, which I think is really interesting, how, how do you determine, because things are changing so fast, and you mentioned business units, they want things now, they need it immediately. How do you determine where to add infrastructure, where to leverage public cloud, where to utilize your private cloud? How do you make those decisions because they're needed so quickly? Yes, that's a great question. So what we call it, we call it a virtual dial. You know, so we're always trying to, you know, make sure the dial is not too high and not too low. So what we do is we do a lot of forecasting, uh, a lot of load balancing to make sure the current infrastructure that we have is in place and ready. But we also utilize the public cloud to test and say, if we were to bring on another 5 million unique users today, how we look for infrastructure. So we, we use those technologies. And, uh, but everything that we actually have for production is all in our own private cloud data center here. And what made you get, so you mentioned a little bit about compliance. What really drove you toward a private cloud? Uh, for, for the decision that you guys made to do that hybrid approach, but to keep a component of that cloud private? What drove that decision for you? You know, it's kind of a multifaceted decision. And, and one of the main decision factors that was really the driving factor for us is that in our private cloud that we use for, um, you know, just testing QA, it periodically goes down and there's issues with it. And there's latency and it takes forever to bring backups down from there. So it just wasn't a good use case for us to go fully, um, you know, to public cloud because we don't have the control and we don't have the redundancies in place that are needed to be able to go in there and successfully be able to deliver products. On top of that, a lot of companies don't realize that anything above the hypervisor level, even on a public cloud, it's still your responsibility. Security, um, you know, you make sure the infrastructure is in place and working correctly. And I think the private cloud for a lot of companies is kind of a false, um, you know, idea that everything's going to be just okay if, if things go wrong. And, you know, there hasn't really been a mass attack on a, on a you know, public cloud yet. That's really been able to show the security flaws and the things that are going on, and how just how long does it take for you to then draw your backups back from there to then spin things back up. So that's a really interesting point that you make, Ryan. I think you're right. People don't either know or talk about that so much. But what type of responsibility do you still have in a public cloud sense? You know, and how does your team have to support that? You know, from a security vulnerability standpoint or an infrastructure standpoint. Yeah, there's actually more responsibility if you go into a public cloud because what you have now on most cases is a multi-tenancy cloud operation. And we have a cloud ops team here. And what we do is we go through and we make sure that our own private cloud is protected. So what that means is the same public or private. So you, you have a hypervisor, which is going to be your server. And anything above that, you're responsible for. Security patches, making sure that you have intrusion detection in there, you have failover firewalls. Um, all those aspects are actually a little bit in my opinion, more difficult to manage on a public cloud because you don't have access to some of the lower level hypervisor activities. If the public cloud wants to restart the hypervisor, you really have no control over that. And they'll give you a window, they'll give you a time, you can fail over and you know, the best practices of using a public cloud, obviously it's have multiple public clouds, right. and multiple instances of that to fail over to you, but then that you know, really drives cost. And then you have OpEx savings you know, that has kind of gone down from the original CapEx savings that you got. So it levels out at a certain point. And because we are growing so rapidly and because we're doing so much, I call it spend, I don't feel comfortable investing all that money and um, man hours into a public infrastructure that at any point in time may need a reboot or may need a restart or, you know, and then you're investing in multiple instances of that as well too. So that's kind of my um, understanding and my philosophy of it. Really, really great perspective, Brian. Thanks. Because I think people are, are struggling with this today. We, we talk a lot about in our business, you know, the build versus buy discussion. I think that's a little bit of a, a public cloud versus maybe private or an on-premise data center discussion. I think that perspective that you have is great. And it sounds like you're making that decision specific to how you operate your business in your IT organization. But some of those challenges they really will cross you know, different verticals and different industries because no matter who you are, you're going to have those responsibilities, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that, that's a big question I get asked a lot is, you know, when do you go from a private cloud to a public cloud or how big do you need to go to then go back to a public cloud, uh, to a private cloud? And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a teeter-totter. In, in every organization and in every industry is going to be different. You know, we're in the healthcare industry, so we have a lot of regulations, a lot of compliances that we have to withstand. If you're a startup, 
and you have little to no capital and you really want to be able to launch probably quickly, I think the public cloud offers you a great solution there. I think for a certain you know, uh, organizations, it's kind of a make or break you. And the public cloud is a lot, of, a lot of these startups to actually get started and really be able to run efficiently with little to no capital. So there's definitely use cases for it.